Hi, my name is John Flett. I'm a paediatrician who helps families, parents, children, young adults with ADHD and those that think and learn a little differently. You know, we are heading up towards uh, March and it'll be April. And in October, November, all the matriculants will sit down and write their final papers and they're going to be heading off to college and university. So what I'd like to talk about is how important it is to have a holistic long-term view of ADHD and beyond school. It's important during your matric year or your final year at school or any high school year is to make sure if you have ADHD that you have a well-organized support system, scaffolding, parents, boarding schools, family, teachers, provide the scaffolding around those with ADHD. ADHD impairs planning, time management, emotional control, awareness, not leaving things until the last moment is a great idea, no procrastination. It's important medication is given consistently, give it every day. ADHD is a life problem, it's not a school problem, it's not a college problem. It's important to have a good breakfast, sleep right. You know, spending all that time learning and trying to study late into the night, it doesn't really add extra benefit. It has what we call diminishing returns. The more time you spend later, you tired, you're not able to kind of get up the next day and function. It has less impact. It has diminishing returns and investment on that time you spend. So I would just like to say all those matriculants, those that are planning to go to college next year or doing any studying, is don't stop your medicine at the end of your matric year. ADHD doesn't suddenly stop at the end of school. It is vital that you take that philosophy through to college. I tend to see sometimes a complete catastrophe, particularly in those children or young adults that leave home, go off to hostels, go into uh, kind of residences. And, you know, there's a huge transition. You know, you put all that effort into getting into a good college or university. And then, of course, you have to self-regulate yourself. There's no one checking you. There's no one cooking, necessarily, in some, if you're in a digs or an apartment sharing with other students. You've got to do your own washing, your own ironing. You've got to look after yourself in a different way. Where maybe you didn't have to do that at home. You know, you just had to focus and work. Now you've got to look after yourself as a young person. You've got to remember to take your medicine. You've got to remember to fill the script. You've got to remember to motivate and also plan. There's a whole different ball game at university. It requires self-regulation, self-awareness. Those are things that are sometimes difficult for those with ADHD. So what I see sometimes those young adults that stay at home, they often have the support system, the scaffolding of their parents in those first couple of years. Or if they go away to college, to have a good plan in place, making sure they take their medication. Don't forget to take your medicine. Make sure that you stick to the same organizational techniques and principles that you were taught at school and also for parents to have constant feedback make sure you check on things make sure that your child is eating turning up to lectures some of the universities have a great system where they've got a swipe card system so as you get into the campus you attend a lecture it gets registered and parents can actually check online to make sure that that's happening. So, you know, medication is often perceived to be not important when you leave school. Remember, there are so many more demands, you know, social demands, you know, impulses, you know. Unfortunately, unmedicated ADHD, 38% of girls have teenage pregnancies. You're learning to drive. 
You've got to make sure that you regulate yourself when you're driving. Have less accidents when you take your medicine. Financial management. Social. Sleep. So those are just a couple of the things that I thought I'd talk about when you make that transition. Sometimes the medication needs to be altered. You know, there are longer acting medicines that are sometimes more useful. Vivance is a very effective medicine that we have available in South Africa. And head-to-head against Concerta and other long-acting medicines, it tends to have a bit of an edge. So those, those are things that I'm finding quite useful with some of my patients and feedback. It has a smoother ride, it doesn't impact the appetite, it comes down. And, you know, when parents see their um, children at uh, holidays, to make sure that you chat, you kind of have feedback, don't lose contact. And for those that are young adults with ADHD, make sure that you put in place organizational systems. Stick to planners. Make sure that you know you have a well uh, thought out um, plan with study times. Making sure that you give yourself breaks, exercise, nutrition. That's one of the things that tends to affect um, young adults at uh, college and university is impulsive eating, cafeterias, junk food, not exercising, you know, overdoing the partying and the drinking. It's not a place to just jaw. You know, be careful of you t- if you're taking additional medications for anxiety, mood, things like interactions with alcohol, very important. And it's so, so kind of addictive um, sometimes for kids with ADHD that they're more likely to try substance uh, um, experimentation. So it's important if you take your medicine, you're less likely to want to look for those shiny new kind of um, addictive changes in your life you're less likely to take and experiment with substance abuse. So I thought I'd just mention some of the things that we should be thinking about as the year progresses and entry into college.